Welcome to this next episode of the Carrots and Cake podcast. I'm very excited to share a client case study today. And we have Lacey and Emma, who is one of the coaches on the Carrots and Cake staff. And we're just going to talk about Lacey's experience just to give you guys some behind the scenes, you know, what coaching is all about, talk about some of her results. And hopefully this resonates with you. I feel like a lot of our clients are kind of in the same boat as far as age, lifestyle, family, work, all all of that good stuff. So we just wanted to give you a little snapshot of what we do behind the scenes. So welcome, Lacey. Welcome, Emma. Lacey, when you first came to Carrots and Cake, you know, what was life like? So when I ca first came to Carrots and Cake, I was absolutely miserable. I just felt terrible and I couldn't figure out what was actually wrong with me. And I just had a really hard time losing weight that I had gained. I don't really know why I had gained the weight. And I was just really struggling. I felt terrible every day. I wasn't sleeping, had a terrible relationship with food, and I was noticing it was affecting my family. So one of the major reasons why I came yeah. to Arts and Cake. And what was your, well, when you were talking about like that relationship with food, like what, how would you describe that? So I had been tracking macro Macros for years on and off. I had tried intermittent fasting. I had done Whole30. If you want to go way back in time, I did Weight Watchers for years. I've just always been somebody who has had to really be mindful of my weight and what I was eating and trying to make healthy choices. But it was always a struggle for me. I was burnt out from tracking macros. I had a, a really hard time with that perfectionist mindset and being black and white and not being able to sustain that just with my family family and having two kids and I was making dinners for separate dinners for everybody. And it was just became such a focus in my life that it was, it, it became a toxic relationship with food. So mm -hmm. I, that sounds very familiar. I mean, personally, and just from working with one-on-one -on -one clients. Yeah. So during that time, maybe it was like right before you came to coaching or whatever, but what, like, what did that frustration feel like? It was just really hard. Like I just, I couldn't get out of my own way. I was anxious. I was exhausted, like mentally tapped out. Um, I'm, I'm a healthcare provider. So working in a pandemic was not ideal, lots of stress and just, I just couldn't figure it out on my own. And I had been working with a coach previously and I would remember saying to her, I'm like, I am miserable three weeks out of the month and one week I feel good. And it just wasn't a lifestyle that I could maintain any longer. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you came to us. Mm -hmm. um, so when Lacey came to us, we did did some functional testing, which, you know, I feel like is maybe where we're a little bit different is that we do dig into the data just because we want to give you like the most direct path to making this health journey easier for you. And of course, just getting you to feel better a little bit quicker. So do you want to talk about, or Lisa, do you want to talk about that a little bit, just as far as like the testing, like what we found, you know, what was helpful, hopefully it was helpful to you. So for the testing, I just wanted to kind of make sure that there wasn't something underlying that was causing all of this for me. And the testing was super easy to do. Some of it feels like so long ago that I um, it was, it was really easy, easy to follow directions on the testing, the results, Tina went over everything. And I think we kind of picked in, picked up on and zoned in on a few things that could be causing some of the issues. And we eliminated some things and changed other things to what I was eating and using the minerals. And I think for me, eliminating the gluten was a huge thing. So that was so helpful. I kind of had a sneaking suspicion that that could be a possibility that could be one of the reasons why I was feeling so terrible because when Tina and I had done our discovery call, I had mentioned that I had done whole 30 and that was probably my time frame in life when I felt the best. So I think that was helpful. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want to cut you off. But I'm <laughs> glad you brought that up. And it, like, I don't want to say like gluten is evil and nobody should have gluten, but you know, just like you were saying, like on the discovery call, there was definitely some clues there. And then we ran the GI map, which is a stool test. So it looks at what's going on in the gut. And there's a marker there that shows us, you know, inflammation in the gut. And sometimes it can be because of gluten. And there's actually a marker on there that gives us an idea of what's happening with gluten and some of the proteins in the gluten and yours was really elevated. And sometimes like that data is really helpful for somebody to be like, oh, 
actually this gluten is causing issues for me because yeah like you kind of had an idea but i think it was helpful to see the test and be like oh yeah actually that's something i should do so that again, definitive just... answer or, or i shouldn't mm -hmm. say definitive definitive but the clues of those those tests was super helpful for me because i don't think i would have eliminated it on my own like, well, i think what a lot of clients feel like is the testing i mean it obviously gives data and information but it can also be really validating to a lot of their symptoms and how they're feeling because i think sometimes you go to not bashing on normal doctors or anything but sometimes you have these symptoms and they are blown off a little bit of like well you're nearing this age and you've had two kids and like you know that's like you're tired of course and so i do think you know i hear time and time again doing the testing obviously gives us you know, some actionable items to do, but it's also just super validating that it's not just in your head that there is some stuff going on that we can address. Which was also part of the issue with me too, is I had gone to my doctor and had brought up these issues. And I really felt like when I went to Tino, she was the only one who really heard me and heard my story and how I was feeling and took me serious because I had gone to my doctor and had said all of these symptoms and it was kind of brushed under the rug, which is stressful and hard. And it's, it just doesn't make for a very good relationship with your doctor when you're telling them all the things that you're feeling and they're minimizing them. Mm -hmm. And you were not alone in that. And I got you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like I hear that all the time from women on like these discovery calls that we have that they're like, oh, I went to my doctor and everything was quote unquote normal, but I still feel like crap. I'm dragging my butt around all day. You know, I have low energy and low moods and zero libido. And, you know, this mm -hmm. like, I don't feel my best. And it's so frustrating when like you're trying to get help and like nobody's helping you. So yeah, that, that was hundred percent my experience too. And I think that's why I'm like so passionate about this now, because like every woman that comes to us, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can see so much of myself and her. And I'm just like, what do we need to do? How do we fix this? How can I help you? And there was more than, I couldn't even tell you how many times that I would send Tina or Emma a message. And I would just say, okay, so this is what's going on. And you were like, I, I totally hear you. Uh, let's try this. Let's try this. And, and it's not an exact recipe for everybody. And Tina and Emma were awesome about making it work for me and fitting my life and trying different things and not just giving up, you know, when something didn't work one way, we tried something different. Yeah. I think that's a, the enjoyable part of the coaching process is you're right. There is, you know, I think sometimes people do come looking for the exact formula to follow and that's just not really how it works and we have to trial stuff but obviously you know we you come to us with symptoms and we we have a list or we have ideas from experience of like okay let's first try this let's see how that feels for you and you communicate with us and then if not let's make this tweak or let's add on this you know it, it is a little you know sometimes trial by error but doing that alone is a lot harder than doing that with like I guess a team of people that you know, can, can guide you. And also again, just hear you and, and not just blow it off. Right. Yeah. And I think struggling with sleep, I didn't know how much that was like affecting my every day. Mm -hmm. And that was like a huge turning point for me. And it's still a work in progress. And like a month ago, I even said, Oh, I need a little tweak of something here. And that was when you suggested that progesterone drops and those have really helped. I couldn't say enough great things about all the different things that we worked on together. Well, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. But I'm and glad you, oh, sorry, go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. Um, I was just going to say like one of the major reasons why I knew this was time to do this for me is because I wanted to take a course and I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to, it's, it's a pretty intense course for my part of my degree. And I really, really wanted to do it. And I knew that right now was the right time, but I felt terrible. So I knew that I wouldn't be able to be able to complete the course and do well and, and be able able to function enough to be able to have that, like manage the stress and, you know, family and all of those things feeling so terrible. So I had to kind of get that stuff in order before I could move on to do the course that I've been working on. Yeah, so. That's awesome. That's some of the, you know, talk about non-scale victories. And I mean, I think that's the things we celebrate the most is just feeling better to do the things you want to do, whether it's just enjoy your kids, enjoy your family and, you know, enjoy your life or yeah, tackle something like that, that you felt like you literally physically and mentally could not do before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Talk and about your blood sugar issues a little bit. I think that was like, oh, yeah. you know, when you started, like you had a little bit of like some scary blood sugar things going on. Mm. So the blood sugar, I think Tina made the connection of how that was affected. The My blood sugar was kind of all over the place. And I think it was really 
the sleep, I never really made that connection that that was what was potentially causing it. And then some of the foods, I had always been somebody who would be like hangry and would be miserably to be around if I was hungry. But Tina helped me kind of sort all of that out. And Emma helped me sort it all out as well. And yeah. I couldn't tell you the last time I had a blood sugar issue. But yeah, there were some pretty scary times I would send Emma and Tina messages. Yeah, you had a few where you were like shaky in the shower or something like that. Yeah, that I was, was a little yelling like, for my husband because I thought I was going to faint. I've never fainted before, but the, what I had imagine what it would feel like, but it, it was pretty, it was pretty scary. And, and like I said, I had gone to my doctor and had asked them about that and everything was normal. <laughs> oh yes. So what are some of the things that you guys did from like a diet and lifestyle standpoint that really helped with like the blood sugar stuff? I know you mentioned the sleep, but like other things that you guys did. We worked on portion control. We worked on balanced meals, making sure I was getting enough protein in at every meal, making sure that I was using like a balanced plate and like I was saying before, you know, I haven't always been the easiest client where I didn't want to track anything because I had been burnt out. And I wanted this to be very much of what my life was like. I wanted to be able to incorporate it so it would be able to be something sustainable throughout my life. And so Emma worked with me and just taking pictures of what I was eating all day. And she would make tweaks and say, okay, maybe next time, or how did you feel after you ate that? Maybe next time try a little smaller portion of this and add a little bit more of that just to make sure everything was balanced. And like I said, it was a work in progress. It wasn't overnight. And we finally got to the point where every day I was like, I'm just working on being consistent. I'm just working, or every week I was saying, I'm just being consistent, just being consistent once we kind of figured out what I needed. But the one of the biggest takeaways for me was never feeling like I was deprived of anything or that I was on a diet or, you know, like it was really just very focused on lifestyle for me and being able to incorporate everything into how I felt and getting over that guilty feeling of eating foods that are not your best choice. And you know that it's not your best choice, but it's some, it's a splurge and getting over that guilty feeling and disassociating those toxic relationships with different foods. Yeah. I think it's important. And I think a lot of people feel like they have to track, like that's the only path. And I think actually it was awesome. Like, I know you were like, Ugh, I'm sorry, but I just do not want to do it. And I'm like, great. We certainly do not have to, because you're right. I don't want people to track forever. I do not think it's a lifestyle. I think it's a tool and it's right. a tool for some people and not a tool for other people, depending on, as you said, your relationship with food, your stage of life, your busy working mom, like you have other things to do. And, you know, with that, it's going to take some time. And I think really as a client, you had great patience in saying like, I'm going to send you the information and I'm going to listen. And also just me as a coach, my job is so much is just to prompt you to also, how did you feel? How long were you full? You know, why don't we try this? Did you also like it? Because you shouldn't feel deprived. You shouldn't be eating food you hate. So yeah, it was, it was, it's that, you know, cliche, slow and steady wins the race, but it's boring and consistent, but you know, that that's kind of what you want long-term wise when it comes to how you eat. Right. I think my biggest takeaway in the most recent time frame is I was a little worried about going on vacation. I'm probably the only person who gets Get stressed about food on vacation is because so many times in the past I've come home from vacation and being, you know, I'd get on the scale and I had gained five pounds or something like that. And I just, it's kind of a weird feeling to be stressed about something like that. You're not the only person that is stressed about going on vacation. I mean, I'd say the majority of my clients send me a message before they go on vacation, feeling very stressed, especially when they are out of control of the options. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to stay with family and the mother-in-law is in charge of the meals and they don't have a choice. So, you know, you're going to be dining out. So it, it right. can be stress provoking. And so that's something we, we want to work on because yeah, well, yeah, like vacations are a part of life and it doesn't have to be again, that all or nothing, you know, like, all right, I'm just going to go eat terrible and then come back and feel horrible physically. And about my choices, there is a middle ground that we can find to enjoy the vacation and the food and the special times, but really it should be about the, you know, the memories and the moments, not just about eating everything that, you know, you're not supposed to have because you're on vacation. Right. And I think that was part of the reason that it, I was so successful is I was really listening to my body and how different foods made me feel. And not that they're necessarily off limits, but it's picking and choosing when it's worth it or when it you're okay saying, I might not feel that great tomorrow. Or you know what, today I haven't eaten enough protein throughout my day. So I'm not going to eat an ice cream tonight, you know, with my kids, or uh, maybe I'll just have a bite of somebody else's ice cream and, and being okay with that. And, you know, 
know, like my family wanted to have ice cream almost every night and I had ice cream two nights. But when I came home, I was up like maybe half a pound. And then the next day I wasn't. So and you um, planned your meals out ahead of time. You got right back to your normal lifestyle because it's just a lifestyle. Yeah. Which was awesome. You sent me a message. You were back home. You checked in just to say like, all right, I'm back to the gym and I'm back eating my normal. Here's my plate. And I think that was, you know, a sign of just success of like, you're just getting back to baseline. You're not getting back to ugh, the diet. I have to get back on. It's just to your baseline lifestyle. Yeah. And we ate out for dinner and I would really try hard to choose foods that I felt were going to be good choices. And it was a balanced plate and not just French fries and chicken tenders or pizza or something like that. So well, I think so much of vacation eating for me, it's like, how do I also want to feel? Because I don't want to feel like, honestly, like my digestion's terrible and I feel super sluggish and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's definitely like a balance there. And I feel like, you know, with this program, like you guys were saying, like, you don't, have to track the macros like let's establish some like foundations and some consistency and like a real plan for your lifestyle instead of just being like you need to cut calories track your macros and do it perfectly because like that's stressful <laughs> like even just saying it I'm just like oh man there's so many other things we can do well and most of our clients come to us with really high stress levels already Right. So I think, you know, what we want to do is kind of like focus in on one or two tangible things at a time to not add more things to your plate, you know, to really just like calm it down, you know, pull back on the intensity of things and focus on a couple of changes at a time. And, you know, over six months, which is why we need the six month program, you know, a lot can happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we're, we're like, Kind of not like dancing around it, but we've like said a few things here about, you know, how our program is, you know, different than other diets and coaches and programs and whatnot. But Lacey, I would love to hear from you. Like, mm -hmm. what do you think is like, really like what makes carrots and cake different than like other things you've done in the past? Um, you guys definitely offered more suggestions on how to make things work for me. And when I I was very honest about how I was feeling. And I think sometimes if you're not self-aware that that can be difficult, but knowing when you're, you know, like in some of the intake forms, it's like, do you think you can actually change? And I'm here. I like it. I'm, I'm open to feedback. I'm open to telling me where I can improve. And I think that that's a big takeaway, but you guys do it in a way that is like, okay, so these are a few ideas. Let's try one of them. And if that doesn't work, we can go to another um, and another in always like changing and adding input, whereas just being like, you know, like say a weekly check-in just saying, how did you feel? Well, I would say how I'd feel in other programs. And then I wouldn't get any feedback on how to change how that felt. <laughs> so like, well, how's your sleep? Okay. It, it's terrible, but I don't know how to fix it. Or they would only offer like one suggestion and not others. So I think that, that that's one of the things that really makes carrots and cakes stand out. Yay. Awesome. I love to hear that. <laughs> and I always say that to our clients and, you know, I mean, I talk to Emma probably 3000 times a day, <laughs> even on the weekends, yep. but yep. I always <laughs> say like, the more we know about you, the more we know what you're struggling with, like the challenges, your mindset blocks, whatever it is, the more we can help you. And I always say this too, like the worst thing a client can do is ghost us. Just like stop talking to us, stop communicating or just barely communicate those are sometimes the hardest clients to work with because they're not a hundred percent in like we're giving 110%. Like we want you to succeed. Like this is important to us. But when the client is like not into it or they're not engaged, it's like really hard. And I think this is why, you know, you and Emma had a good relationship. We had a good relationship is because there were these like awesome lines of communication. Like we were talking a lot and trying to make it work for you because this is not a cookie cutter program. We don't just give you food lists and tell you not to eat certain things and, you know, send you with macros. Like it really is kind of like a holistic approach to all of this. And, you know, our goal is sustainability in the long run. Like really, like we want this to work for you. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so was there like a moment in this whole experience that like really sticks out where you're like, 
this is working or like something has changed and it's like a really positive change. I'll never forget one day when Emma sent me a message and I don't even think Emma knows this. She sent me a message one day and she was just like, just remember food is abundant. And I think that was a moment that kind of clicked with me. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. Food is abundant. And yes, there might be in the moment. I It's not something that I can eat right this moment, but it's something that I I do have access to all the time. And even like just the confidence that Emma gave me with eating out to dinner, I think that's really changed as well for me. I remember it was like Christmas time and I had gone out to eat like way more than I ever have in my life in this one week. And Emma kept saying, it's okay, it's okay. You made good choices. So that was like one of those turning moments in the coaching too. Like, I'm like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And even I mean, I want people to have the confidence in that they know how to do it for themselves. I mean, we're here and we want to coach, but ultimately by the end, I want people to walk away feeling like, like I can do this by myself, not like, oh gosh, but if I don't have Emma to check in every, you know, send pictures of every meal and do this, like I can't do it. It's it's about really having the confidence in the knowledge and, you know, in, in knowing how to check in with yourself to, to do it by yourself. Yeah. And, and that was what we did. Like towards the beginning of my coaching, I would send a lot, way more pictures than I did towards the end. And, and t- towards the end, it, sometimes it would be two weeks before I sent pictures. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was just like every week, you know, saying I'm just being consistent. I'm being consistent and eating similar things, but not always the same thing. And just trying to make it work for my family. Like there was every Tuesday, it was still taco Tuesday, you know, and, and that worked and just making different choices. So, so helpful. <laughs> That's awesome. So I have a couple like little wrap up questions here. This has been great. I mean, I love, love all this, but like, if you had to look at your life, like when you started this program to today, you know, like what are the things that are just really different as far as like how you live your life, like what you eat, like all those things. I know you've kind of talked about them, but mm-hmm. like big picture. I'm definitely getting way more, more quality sleep, which is huge for me. I really struggled with insomnia for years of my life and that has been much better in life. And quality of life, I really feel like I've changed my relationship with food and making it not something I was thinking about, which was one of my major goals not something I'm thinking about all the time. Like I was always worried what my next meal was going to be or how I was going to make it work. And there are some times where I don't do a ton of food prep and I just make sure that I buy the right foods that I have in my house so that I know that I can make good choices throughout the week. But the other thing I will say is I don't feel like my life is that different because I feel like I've made it so I've incorporated this into my life um, rather than totally changing everything. It's just habit and it's just consistency and it's just making it work for me. Yes. So. I love that. <laughs> so there have been tons of changes, but still it doesn't feel like my life was like thrown totally upside down. It was just small. Well, I think t- that's more realistic. And as we keep mm-hmm. throwing around the word sustainable is because, you know, mm-hmm. yes, like you can go on an extreme diet and throw out all this food and try not to go out to eat for 60 days and do all these things, but that's not life. So I think figuring out how to, you know, just make choices that are in line with your goal within your life, you know, and it's not to say that you don't have to make changes of, you know, you know, being intentional about what you go out to eat and being intentional about the groceries you buy, you do, but it should just become normal, not, you know, some big overall that you're kind of white knuckling your way through that doesn't ever work. Yeah. So probably the most change is that it's really just changed a relationship from a toxic relationship with food to a healthier relationship with food. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that makes me so happy. And I'm glad you guys brought that up too, because I do feel like sometimes when like women start these like new diet programs or, you know, just like a new weight loss program, like the program asks them to do so many different things at once. Like you got to clean out your pantry and give up sugar and no more gluten and no more dairy. And you have to work out six times a week. And like, that's super overwhelming. You throw some macros in there. Oh my gosh, you have 8,000 things that you need to do. And I feel like you can only sustain that for so long. So like just saying that, like, you know, your life isn't so different, but now you just have like a better relationship with like what you're eating, how you feel about it. And, you know, you just feel better too. But I do feel like when you try to do too many things at once, like 
it's too much and you almost default to doing nothing. <laughs> and like, that's the opposite of what we want. We're trying to layer this stuff in, not overwhelm you and make it simple for you. Because ultimately at the end of the day, you know what's going to work best for you and your family and your lifestyle. So it really is kind of like that back and forth relationship we've been talking about. So I just love that you said a few of those things. And then, so if somebody is listening to this podcast right now and they're thinking about maybe working with the Carrots and Cake team, what would you tell them? I think it's totally worth it. I just had such a great experience. I needed that validation of the functional testing to be able to make sure that, you know, to eliminate things that I thought could be going on in my life and just those sustainable habits that were sprinkled into life and just making the small changes over time was what I feel has been very sustainable and helpful for me. Yay. Awesome. I love that too. Well, guys, this was amazing. Is there anything either of you want to add as far as this whole coaching journey goes before we wrap up? I mean, I think, you know, she said it best by far from from her experience. I think to me, it's it's teamwork. Like this is a collaborative effort. This isn't like us just telling somebody blindly what to do. It's the best, the most success, I think, in the best coaching relationships are the ones where we just work together and you know we, we both have the same goals in mind and yeah it's a collaboration and that's the fun part for sure awesome well thank you guys thank you for coming on the podcast and sharing your experience this is wonderful i think that's it i think we're just going to wrap up here <laughs> thank you guys for being on this episode of the carrots and cake podcast and i hope you both have a great day thanks you too bye guys bye.